this is the fifth in a series of videos about this greenhouse build and how I incorporated the shipping container and the geothermal systems. In the last video, I answered the question about insulating the shipping container and how I wrapped it and the thermodynamic relationship between the insulation and the earth tube. Then I shared some of the basics about how to lay block and using center blocks for the foundation. The next logical step was to build the roof structure, but I thought it would be helpful to stop and take the time to make a video about greenhouse structures and talk about some of the advantage and disadvantages of some of the designs and some of the things that I looked at in deciding to build like I did. And it's my hope that'll help you decide which greenhouse design is best for you. It's always amazing to me how much creativity can be found in greenhouse designs. I mean, the, the choice of where and how people are growing things indoors is pretty much unlimited. They grow in closets and warehouses, underground. I've seen uh, farms floating on water, even up in the space station. I've seen greenhouse builds that are over swimming pools, under a trampoline. Uh, they're shaped like geodesic domes or hobbit houses. And I've even seen an algae farm shaped like a teepee. So which greenhouse design is best for you? Good question. Of course, it all starts with what you're trying to accomplish, what you want to build, and the resources you have. You know, if you haven't watched video two about planning and budgeting, you could go back and watch that. That would be helpful. A custom one-off build like this one is very different than building a greenhouse from a kit. But there's certainly nothing wrong with using a kit. In fact, there's a lot of advantages to building with a kit. And I'll talk about what I found to be advantages and disadvantages in each design I talk about. And of course, there's a lot more design variations than I'm going to be able to explore with you today. But these are the ones that I studied before I started to build my greenhouse. One thing to keep in mind is that you'll find more than one name for some of the similar designs that we're going to be talking about. And some are named for outstanding features or uses. The round arch is a really good example of that. You'll find these called hoop houses, high tunnels, caterpillar tunnels, uh, bent pipe, and if it was attached to your house, it could even be called a sunroom. Most of these designs are attached right to the ground or to a board on the ground, so you don't have to go through the expenditure of building a footing and foundation, and they probably wouldn't even require a permit and you can adapt those to be movable. And there's some good information about winter gardening and crop rotation where having a movable uh, round arch is really helpful. It's easy to add length to. You can go as long as you want. They have excellent light. And if you put plastic on them, it's relatively inexpensive to, to cover them. And they can be opened up on the sides and on the ends for good ventilation. Some of these are designed to be covered with polycarbonate which is more expensive, but most can be covered with plastic, which is less upfront cost. The downside to that is if you cover it with plastic, you'll typically have to replace that every four to five years. So you'll have to budget for that replacement. In smaller sized greenhouses of this design, you might find it hard to find enough headroom on the sides, unless you make it really tall. This design is expensive to heat, which is no big deal, if you're not going to grow year round. And they can be prone to get damaged from high winds. And it has a round top, so snow doesn't slide off of it so easily. You know, you got to think about that snow load. Uh, if you get a foot of snow, it's like having a grown man like me standing every three feet across the top of your greenhouse. And it can collapse pretty easily. And we see that every once in a while. Some growers get around this by removing the plastic for the winter. A variation of the round arch is the gothic arch. And these have all the advantages and disadvantages of the hoop house, except for the design is stronger. So they're better at holding up under the wind. And because of the shape, snow will slide off of them better. And the strength and the structural integrity of both the, the round arch and the gothic arch can be improved by incorporating a post and ridge brace in the middle. You can put braces or trusses in them. The most important thing is if you're using a kit, go to the manufacturer before you buy it and make sure that they're engineered for where you're at and what you're doing. The traditional style of a greenhouse has four walls, a gable roof structure. And the fact is you would think that the word greenhouse came from this structure because they're shaped like a house. And that's the way most greenhouses 
or green facilities, growing facilities, were built in the past. One of the advantages to the traditional styles that they're more conducive to schools and commercial applications because they can be built as permitted structures so they can be insured and they can be covered with polycarbonate so they're going to last longer they're easier to heat and cool and to run special devices in them like fans that are built for them and they're easy to vent because of the structure and the resale value on those things are, are really good the disadvantages if you're evaluating this is that they do require permits and they're more expensive to build because they have a footing, a foundation, they have to be engineered, all that stuff. Next on the list is the Wallapini or what I like to call the pit design. And being underground, this design makes good use of the thermal mass and it's easy to heat and cool. I like that idea of using thermal mass, but there's a couple of things I didn't like about it. One thing is I didn't want to have to go down a stairway or a ramp to get in and out of my greenhouse. One thing you have to consider is if you have groundwater, you have to install a sump pump and, and a draining system. In the shoulder seasons like spring and, and late fall and winter, because the walls are so high, you're going to get a lot of shading in there. So you're going to have to supplement that with light, which might be okay if, you know, because you've, you're not having to spend the money on heating. Another thing about this design is that the roof structure typically goes all the way down to the ground. And if you do that, you're going to have trouble with kids and animals, uh, pets getting on that and damaging your roof, and it can be dangerous. I didn't think I was going to have that problem in my design, but I was proven wrong by my cat named Tig. That cat decided it was really fun to chase bugs all over the plastic. He would jump up on the side, so he put holes in it. Fortunately, the holes are really small and it's going to be easy to repair that with uh, greenhouse repair tape. And I still love TIG. The design I gleaned the most from was the passive solar design. They have really good lighting. The angle of the roof is conducive for the snow to slide off. Uh, they're easy to build vents for. Uh, they're easier to heat and cool because the north side has a wall or can be insulated like mine. Uh, it can use a shipping container or some kind of structure. It can be bermed up with dirt and uh, attached to a structure. Uh, a good example of this is Michael Bland's use of dirt bags. And if you haven't watched those videos, we have a series of videos of how he built a passive solar greenhouse using dirt bags as the structure. It's really interesting. And I looked at attaching this design to my house, but for me, the extra taxes and insurance outweighed the advantages because I wanted a pretty big greenhouse. Some people use barrels of water on the north side of their greenhouses for a heat sink, and I've heard that works really well. For me, it didn't make sense because it would cause shading in the shipping container, and I grow some tall plants, so those tall plants would shade those barrels. Now, I am thinking about experimenting with putting them just uh, on the north side underneath my vents. And some things we thought about doing was using those uh, to heat water with in the winter, to use in the floor or uh, have them run through some fans for heating. And then in the summertime, when we didn't need the heat, we could drain those barrels or maybe even use it to, to warm the water up uh, for watering. This kind of a design is a permanent structure, so you're may have to get permits you have to look into that and they can be expensive to build but they're energy efficient hold up with the weather and they're really good resale value another design is called the waterfall or the chinese design this is a variation of the passive solar and it has all the design advantages of the passive solar but the big difference is that the roof is curved instead of flat and the curve is more conducive to shedding snow and it diffuses the light a little better. When I was designing my greenhouse, my goal was to use the space and resources I had, then adapt and incorporate some of the best elements of these designs we discussed today into my design. One of the biggest reasons I used a shipping container in my design was because I already had it and I wasn't using it. So I used that shipping container in my build on the north side to provide space for a root cellar on one end, a workroom on the other, and an open work area so I could work on growing seeds, planting seeds, or working on my equipment. And it provided a way to, to insulate the north side and install the earth tube in the thermal mass, and that's working really well. 
The wall I built over the shipping container provides excellent venting and an adequate height to get the pitch that I needed to shed the, our Montana snow, which is a lot sometimes. And by building on grade the building and building the dirt up around the foundation, I was able to avoid having to put a stairway or steps down in and out of my greenhouse. And I was able to provide a good headroom in the south by using a waterfall design and bending the lower sections of the roof. The next video I'm going to share with you is about actually building these, these trusses, how I did that, and some of the painting I did. So look forward to seeing you on the next one. So that's it for video five. Thanks for watching. And I have to tell you that it's a real honor and a privilege for me to be able to share this information for you. And I hope you find it helpful. And be sure to share this with others and share howtofarmandgarden.com. There's a plethora of information on there. And some of those speakers and teachers on there are world-class and world-changing people. It's an honor to be able to put them on there. Now, if you haven't subscribed, that's a good way to uh, stay up to date on the videos, uh, both for this one and howtofarmandgarden.com in general. And hit the like button, leave a comment, ask your questions. I'll try to get back to you. So until next time, behave yourself. <laughs>